Enough of these frou-frou topics. I'd like to move on to something a little bit more weighty. Oh yeah. Check this out. The force of gravity depends on this constant of the universe called capital G. And I guess it depends if I've got a mass here, M1, and another mass over here, M2. It depends on the mass of each of those things. Imagine, this thing doubles in mass. You would imagine the force of gravity would double. And if this guy doubled in mass instead, then you'd imagine the force of gravity would double. So we gotta get both those masses in here, M1 and M2. And it also depends on how far apart the two masses are. So I'll define this thing. We'll think about the force of gravity on, the force of gravity on M2. Depends on the distance to M1, center to center, that distance, square. All right, let's see. And uh, I guess it's gonna get stronger. The force of gravity is gonna get stronger as the distance gets smaller. So we're gonna need to divide by R. It turns out it's squared. Okay, so we know that this force though is not in the R direction. On M2, the force is inward. The force of gravity, so we need a minus sign right there. And then we need an R hat vector to show us which way that force of gravity is. It's not in the direction of the R vector, rather it's back towards the other mass. So here's what I want to do. I want to show you a little picture of that force of gravity as it depends on distance. So we can make some more sense of it. Here's the force of gravity. And uh, let's see if we can get a graph going. If I plug in R is infinity, sorry, label my axes, right? If I plug in that the distance between the two masses is infinite, then this is going to be, well, negative some constant divided by infinity squared. That's a really big number that I'm dividing by. So it turns out I won't be able to fit any infinity squares in there and I'm gonna get zero. But as I get smaller radius, this is going to be negative the entire time. So I'm thinking about it getting negative and look, it gets, ooh, it gets really, really negative at r equals zero. In fact, it's at negative infinity. So I can take this back like here and I can show that, oh yeah, that function gets really, really negative. The question is, can you even imagine a situation where masses are separated by no distance at all? I don't think I can either. Can you now? How about now? Can you, did you think of anything? Nope, me neither. Let's consider the work done by gravity. Let's see, maybe, uh, maybe I wanna consider the work done against gravity. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. As we apply a force to separate this lump of dirt from this lump of dirt, we're gonna be interested in the vector aura that goes between here and here. We know that work is the integral of force over distance, right? And there's a dot product here. And we're gonna say, uh, I guess instead, <clears throat> let's just say that we're going in the R direction. That's the R direction, and in order to separate M1, we'll move it that way. So the X direction is the R direction. I can make a quick change of variables, variables right here. It'll be F D R, and I don't need a dot product because I'm actually moving in that direction. So I wanna figure out the work done against gravity. And I wanna say that that's gonna be equal to, well, let's, oh, what are we gonna do? Let's get into this. The force of gravity is G times M1 times M2 over R square. And then I integrate over R. So I can pull out these constants and I get capital G times M1 times M2 times the integral of one over R square dr, which is a look upable integral, no problem at all. Type this into integrals.com. And you'll have yourself a little answer and it'll say that it's negative one over R. That's what that is. Dot, 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 dot. Negative one over R. So I'm gonna plug that sucker in. I get G times M1 times M2 times negative one over R. That's the indefinite integral. We can expand this to look like this. Negative G times M1 times M2 over Ara. Look at how similar it looks to the force itself. This is over Ara, that's 
over r a squared. So this work done against gravity The work done against gravity is the change in gravitational potential energy. So this gives us a very, very powerful equation. And in fact, I'll give you a flower pot for that equation. We'll put it on the side. That is such an important equation that you get a flower pot and a star. All right, um, let's think about what this means. This says that the work done against gravity is negative at every distance. Gravitational potential energy is always negative. That makes sense. I guess what this negative sign is saying is it's a bound system. It doesn't have enough energy to escape and actually be free to go to an infinite R. Now, this energy becomes zero. Gravitational potential energy becomes zero when R is infinity. Try that out. G M1 M2 divided by infinity. Well, yeah, that's zero. Okay, and what about, uh, what about at zero? What is the gravitational potential energy when two things are immediately on top of each other? If two things go so close to each other that they're right on top of each other, this becomes, at zero, gravitational potential energy is negative infinite. That means that gravitational potential energy can go from zero when things are infinitely far apart all the way to negative infinity, and that means when, ooh, when, this is an interesting idea, when gravitational potential energy goes down, what could go up? Hey, I know what could go up. Potential energy, no, just kidding. How about kinetic energy could go up? When things are allowed to move, when they're allowed to tap into gravitational potential energy, they are allowed to accelerate, and so kinetic energy goes up. And in fact, in the, loss, in the lack of friction environment of space, gravitational potential energy is immediately converted into kinetic energy. So things speed up as they get closer and closer, and at the instant when they're on top of each other, they would be going, in theory, at infinite speed. That conflicts with several laws of physics. So we'll get into some more details on that soon.